Hello everyone and welcome to my video. Today, I will be looking at the stock Party City and to determine whether it is a deep value fit. Now, just a disclaimer before we go further, this is a high risk and high reward stock. We are looking at it from a deep value perspective for a reason. The prices are basement cheap and there is a reason why they are basement cheap. I have invested in the stock I have about 343 shares invested at about a $2.06 price tag at the time of this recording. Therefore, I need to say that I have a stake in this company. So any biases that I might have, you have to take note of it, right? As usual, this is not financial advice for entertainment only, and it's only for your information. For to get to know more about your risk appetites and all those, please, please, please go and find your financial advisor and don't listen to someone talking off YouTube. These are all my personal opinions, all right? Without further ado, let's continue. So, Party City. I'm pretty sure a lot of you in America is very familiar with Party City. They are a specialized party retailer, party goods retailer, that operates about 850 franchise stores around the US. And during Halloween, they also open up 250 to 300 pop-up stores every year in order to serve the increased Halloween demand. So, the market is generally bearish towards retailers, right? We look at Bed Bath & Beyond, Toys R Us, Macy's, all these companies are being replaced by e-commerce. And that is the general brush stroke that a lot of people take a look at Party City. And the share price probably supports this trend as well. If you check out their share price, it's been going downhill since 2019. A lot of people have been thinking like, oh, this is going to end up like another Toys R Us, like another Macy's. But this is a typical cigar butt company, which is why I'm applying the deep value formula to the company, which we'll look at later. With great risk comes great reward. Yes, this stock is a definition of that. And I think potentially we can be looking at a 400% upside reward for the company given its dirt cheap price today. So if you have ever heard of Keith Gill or as he's more well known as Roaring Kitty and you've watched any of his streams, you will know that he is a very deep value guy, right? And within his streams, he always talks about how he has a deep value investing formula. He doesn't really explicitly say it out, but based on me watching the videos, I think I can decipher out the main points, right? So what I've gathered is that one, it needs to have big insider buys. A credit risk timeline that suggests a near-term bankruptcy is not likely. And finally, good operational performances that is not the fault of management. All this, once a company fulfills all these things, because usually companies who are priced in deep value territories are probably about to go bankrupt or is financially distressed. So we have to find out whether the company can survive for the extra few more years. When people start realizing that, that's where the big multi-bagger money comes in. So first, we'll look at the big insider buying. So as you can see, in the last 12 months, there's been a net inflow of 3.9 million shares. All right, oops, sorry. There's been a net, in, net inflow of about 3.9 million shares and an outflow of about 134,000 shares. So overall, the executives in the company are buying a lot more than selling. The selling is probably for tax purposes as well. You can go to the Nasdaq and look at the filings as to why they sold. Sometimes it's because of taxes after they exercise their options. But it is an overwhelming majority compared to the outflows. Insiders are buying the stock. Especially when we look at Brad Weston, the CEO of the company, who currently owns about 2.7 million shares out of the 115 million shares outstanding in Party City, which represents about 2.3%. I cannot emphasize enough. This is not normal. All right. Usually, people who are not founders of the company don't own that much stock of a particular company. The fact that the CEO owns 2.3% of the company shows his immense confidence to the company. All right, so we have big insider buying checks. Now what about institutional shareholders? Because these usually take up a majority 
of many public companies like Apple, 3M, if you look at it, all of their top shareholders are usually all these institutional investors. So who's the top investor in Party City? As you can see, it's not BlackRock, it's not Vanguard, it's some it's a it's a company called Cash Investment Partners LLC. If you go and Google what Cash Investment Partner is, it is basically a value-based investment firm or hedge fund who is being led by Cliff Sosin. So we have a value uh, value investing hedge fund that is invested in the company which shows the company's immense value. It is only waiting for the market to realize its potential, right? And even Roaring Kitty has talked about Cliff Sosin before in one of his videos. When talking about Party City, I think about two years back before the GameStop saga, he was talking about how Cliff Sosin is also a value guy. So no doubt, definitely Party City is very value. And if you're thinking like, oh, it's a meme stock. No, it's not. There's big, smart, institutional money involved in this. People can see why Party City is a really deep value play and the risk reward is worth it. Next, we look at the credit risk timeline. Are they going to go bankrupt or are they at risk of going bankrupt in the near term? Generally, yes, they are at, they do have the possibility of going bankrupt, but not in the near future. So party's current net debt to EBITDA ratio is about six to one. It's very dangerous. A healthy company should ideally have a net debt to EBITDA of less than three. Party is double that, right? They only have, they have 1.5 billion in debt relative to only an EBITDA of about 200 million. Now, that is unacceptable. But think about it. Look at how cheaply party is priced. Its P ratio is less than two and its price to sales ratio is only 0 0.1, which means they're making 200, sorry, they're making 2 billion in revenue, but their market cap is only 200 million. And they basically make about 100 and something million right now per year. In two years, you would have made all that money back in terms of profit from the company alone. The profit will exceed the market cap with two years at the valuation that they are right now. Therefore, we need to look at whether they can survive the, the, the near term when COVID starts re reopening and everything, which it has. The, this Halloween will be the first Halloween that is free of COVID restrictions. So we look at the article here by Fitch, right? So Fitch has reaffirmed Party City's long-term issuer default rating at B-. minus. It's not the most ideal, but they revised their rating outlook from negative to stable. This is very good. A majority of Party City's debt has been refinanced to 2026 or 2025. So they have a few years of runway to execute on their strategies right now and capitalize on the reopening of Halloween to get their company back on track. So there definitely is the possibility that they'll go bankrupt, but not very soon. With cigar butt companies, this always happens. The last puff, and we are headed or going for this last puff. Warren Buffett did it when he's young. So we are basically kind of replicating what Warren Buffett did or what Warren Buffett would do if he was young. Just look at this, all right? They have refinanced uh, the majority of their senior secured loans due 2026. So they've refinanced their loans maturing in 2022 and they've extended it to 2026. So they raised bonds to pay off their existing ones so that they can delay the timeline to 2026. Of course, if you're looking at a dividend portfolio, a company that you can hold forever, this is not ideal. We are not looking for that. We are looking for a cigar butt that has one last puff in it. All right. So the fact that they have successfully refinanced their bonds up to 2026 shows me that they will not go bankrupt in the near term. So that's two conditions checked out of the three. Now, we, are, we will be looking at the last one. 
whether the company has good operational performance. So, as you can see, Pathé City has basically been on a downtrend since probably about 2015. It's been quite stable around the 2018-2017 time, but when 2019 hit, that was when the true downtrend came. So, why was this? So, let me, let me tell you why. The helium shortage of 2019, COVID happened in 2020, interest rates rising in 2022, and currently we are going, another, going through another helium shortage. Of all this, do you see anything that has to do with the management? No, helium shortage is a commodity problem. COVID, well, it's a global pandemic. Rising interest rates has to do with that. And the helium shortage has to do with, of course, commodities again. So this is where I want to talk about. A lot of people would think that like helium is like um, not supposed to be in a retailer. Like why is it a risk for Party City about helium prices and supply and demand? Well, this is where Party City qualities become very interesting. Helium is actually Party's unique risk, but it is also its moat. So let me get the risk out of the way first, right? Party City is uniquely affected by the commodity risk presented by helium. So in 2019, there was a helium shortage and Party could not sell balloons. One of the biggest advantages that Party has was that it could sell pre-blown up balloons as compared to Amazon. So a lot of this has been mitigated. And helium prices, depending on whether it's high or low, will also greatly affect Party's margins therefore affecting its earnings. Which brings me to its moat, right? Amazon, you have no way of buying pre-blown up balloons from Amazon. It's also not financially viable for Amazon to put a helium tank in each of their vans and when customers ordered balloons, they blow up on the site. No, it's not practical and it's very space consuming. So consumers will have to buy them physically. Which is also why Party, unlike other competitors like Toys R Us, Macy's, Bed Bath & Beyond, they are still profitable. They ha their revenue is $2 billion last year. This is not a sign of a quickly dying company, although it might be dying a bit slowly, right? Party offers blown up balloon deliveries, which presents itself as a moat against Amazon. Balloons are the highlight of a lot of people's parties. Without that, you wouldn't really call it a party, right? So this moat has protected parties somewhat from the disruption of e-commerce and because of this the balloon margins are also a lot higher than the other products so their main money maker for party city is actually balloons you 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 bring this back to the commodity risk that helium presents and you can see how these balloon sales present a very interesting mode or advantage but it also comes with a risk now i've mentioned that there's a helium shortage in 2022 but the management is currently doing a very good job by sourcing different suppliers in order to try to mitigate this as this has happened to them before. In 2019, they're not going to let it happen or affect them as badly once again in 2022. And finally, to the bull thesis. Now that we have checked all the criteria for it being a deep value stock, I'd like to tell you why I'm investing in it now. Party City traditionally performs very good during Halloween and this Halloween is expected to be the biggest yet as released by the National Retail Federation. They expect that the spending for this year's Halloween would exceed even pre-pandemic 2019. So adding this to Party's prior run-up before Halloween, I believe that this can be an 8 or $9 stock by Halloween, assuming macro conditions are decent. If a bad inflation report comes out, if the Fed decides to suddenly raise rates, these things are outside our control. But what we as deep value investors know is that we have bought a stock at basement bargain prices and we are merely waiting for the market to discover it and carry us all the way back up to its intrinsic value. Therefore, I am invested in Party City. Party fits all the boxes, in my opinion, of the deep value investing formula.
If you like more of my videos breaking down Party City's unique business models, please do like and subscribe to my video. I'm very excited to share my knowledge with everyone. And please, once again, like and subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much for your time.